Okay, now that we've done the easy redox reactions, and then also learn how to do oxidation numbers, now we're going to do the more involved problems, but it's the same methodology with just a couple of extra steps at the end. Remember, it's the same steps, but instead of using charge, we simply use oxidation number, which allows us to assign anything for any of these kinds of problems. So, this is a minus 2. Let's go ahead and go through the steps. Remember those steps. Assign oxidation numbers. Draw the arrows between the atoms that are changing their oxidation number. Balance the atoms with those arrows are attached. Temporary. Balance. Temp balance. And then we do the electrons lost and gain balance. Then we rewrite, showing the ion charges and the reactant coefficients only. This becomes really important when we get more involved problems. And then we balance by inspection. There's three extra steps. In acidic solution, you use H+. In OH basic solution, you use OH-. And we use these to balance the charge first. Then you use the waters to balance the oxygen. And then you finally check the hydrogen to make sure we're balanced. Okay, so let's go about our business. First step, assign oxidation numbers. That minus 2 is on the whole dichromate ion. Each of these oxygens is a minus 2. Would you agree that if there's 7 of them, that adds up to a total of minus 14? The total charge on the species is a minus 2. What does this total have to be? Minus 14 to get minus 2. Does it not have to be 12 plus? Because 12 plus negative 14 is equal to negative 2? Of course. But there's two chromiums, which means each of them has to be a plus 6. Important deal. If you don't get the oxidation numbers right, you get in trouble. Do whatever algebra you need to do to get those oxidation numbers right, but the faster you can do it, the better off you are. Okay, this is vanadium by itself, it's a zero. This is hydrogen ion that's plus one, so that's the oxidation number. Chromium is a plus three. Oxygen is a minus two in this compound. It ends up being a plus one. What minus four is equal to plus one? Plus five. Five minus four is equal to one. If you don't get 5 and get it fast, find a way until you do. Your job, if you have to, is to practice more. Okay, and oxygen is always a minus 2 in a compound. Hydrogen is always a plus 1. Okay, we have our oxidation numbers set. Now we're going to pick out the atoms on both sides that are changing their oxidation numbers and connect them with arrows. Notice that the hydrogen starts off as a plus 1 ends up as a plus one. All the oxygens, in this case, start off as minus two and end up as minus two. So they're not part of the electron exchange. They're just sort of like spectator ions, but for electron exchange reactions. The business end of this reaction shows the vanadiums going from zero to plus five, and the chromiums going from plus six to plus three. That's where the arrows are. What's the next step? It's the one that everybody skips. They want to say plus 6 to plus 3, and don't worry about it. But you have to temporarily balance those atoms when they have their arrows attached, because for every two chromiums in a dichromate ion, you have two chromium plus 3s. Two of them. That's the only way. Two chromiums, two chromiums. One vanadium so one vanadium over here. That makes it easy. Okay, so we've balanced the atoms. Now let's look. We'll do the one-to-one -one ratio. One times zero is zero total on this side. One times plus five is a plus five total on this side. To get from zero to plus five, we lose five electrons, right? Good. Now what's going on here? Well, we already figured out that's plus 12. Why is that plus 12? Because there's two chromiums, each of which is plus 6. So we've already sort of done that. 
two chromiums, each of which is plus 6, or a total of plus 12 on this side. What about here? We've got two chromiums, each of which is plus 3, or a total of plus 6 on this side. Great! From plus 12 to plus 6, are we getting more positive or more negative? More negative. How do you get more negative? You add electrons. How many? Six. Ooh, weird. Gaining six, losing five. How do you make that balance out? What's the least common multiple between the two? Let's see. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty. There it is. It's 30. So we're going to multiply here by 6 to end up with minus 30 electrons total. We're going to multiply here by 5 to get a total of plus 30 electrons. So 30 moles of electrons are exchanged here between the dichromate and the vanadiums. This 6 jumps down to the end of that arrow, and this becomes 6 times 1. That's that coefficient. This 5 jumps up here, becomes 5 times 1. That's that coefficient. And all this work, all of these adding and subtracting, and oxidation numbers, and all this mess is just to get this coefficient and that coefficient because once we get those we can balance which is why we rewrite and to keep ourselves from getting confused we forget about the oxidation numbers and only include ion charges and only include the reacting coefficients that we know we need that, but we don't know how many hydrogens there are. Not yet. We haven't even looked at it yet. This is a temporary balance. Can't be two, right? We already have a five out here. So that was just a temporary number. So that we can understand the total number of electrons lost and gained to make all of these chromiums turn into all of those chromiums. Both of these chromium plus sixes turning into both of these chromium plus threes. We don't know VO2, but we have to include the plus one charge. And we don't know with the water. Okay, so we've gotten all the way to step five. Step six is the last three parts. Balance by inspection. Well, if that's a five, what do we know for sure? That we need ten chromiums, right? Ten. Five times two is ten. If we have six vanadiums, that means we need six vanadiums on that side. Okay, good so far. We still don't know this coefficient and this coefficient. And that's what we have to figure out. Well, we do that by balancing the charge first. And since there's H+, plus, we use that to balance the charge. We look at the charge first because it wouldn't matter if we added a million waters, we wouldn't change the charge on either side because this is a zero charge, this water. Okay, so what do we do? We figure out the charge. What's the charge on the left? It's five times minus two plus six times zero because that's a vanadium atom plus and let's call it x times plus one, right? x. We're not sure what that is yet. We're going to call it x. Or maybe, uh, uh, why don't we do this? Instead of x, let's call it question mark. Something times plus one. So we still don't know what the charge is on this side. On this side, what do we got? We've got 10 times plus three plus six times plus one plus, I don't know, times zero. Well, it doesn't matter what that is. It's still going to be zero. 
So can you see that this means that we know we have 36 on the right plus 36 on the right? And no matter what this coefficient is, this is always going to be plus 36 on the right. So therefore, we need to have plus 36 on the left in order for the charge to be balanced. Right? Well, what do we have so far? We've got 5 times minus 2, which is negative 10, plus 6 times 0, which is 0, plus something times plus 1. Right? Or in other words, negative 10 plus what times plus 1 is equal to 36. Well, doesn't this have to be 46? Because negative 10 plus 46 times 1 is equal to 36. So 46 is what we have to have for our h plus coefficient. 46. Okay. It is what it is because that's what it is. So let's add them up. Good. We're good with that. The charge is even on both sides. So what's next? Use water to balance the oxygens. Let's look up here and see how many oxygens we have on each side. 5 times 7, right? 5 times 7 plus 6 times 0, right? Because there's no vanadiums, or no oxygens in vanadium, plus 46 times 0 means that we know that there's 35 oxygens on the left. If there's 35 oxygens on the left, and we have all these coefficients, so that's done, and we need 35 oxygens on the right. All right, so how many oxygens do we have on the right-hand side? That's 0. That's 12, right? 6 times 2. Why don't I write that out? 6 times 2. And then we've got, I don't know, times 1. So, that means to get 35 on the right, this is 12 plus what times 1? Isn't that 23? Would you agree that 23 plus 12 is 35? That means that coefficient has to be 23. Right? Because the only way you can get 23 oxygens plus 12 oxygens to be equal to 35 is if there's 23 waters. And if we've done everything right, let's check the hydrogens. There are 46 hydrogens on the left. 23 times 2 is 46 hydrogens on the right. We're done. That is the balanced equation, and that's how you do this. Okay? Now, we've taken a lot of time stepwise through this process. It's really not so bad if you know what you're doing stepwise, and you take your time in calculating each individual part. Big key, making sure you temporary balance making sure you get the ratios right, making sure you add up the charges correctly. That's the balanced equation. The next time that we do this, we're going to try splitting this up into half reactions. You tell me which way is simpler. I know my vote. Okay. Hopefully you got that one. Hopefully you feel comfortable with it. Let's keep moving on.